Helminth is a general term used to describe a type of parasitic worm that can infect and live in various organisms, including humans. To recap, parasites can be divided into three main types. You have the protozoa, the helminths, which we'll focus on, and the ectoparasites. Helminths comes from the Greek word helmins, which means intestinal worm. Today, they refer to worms that not only cause problems in intestines, but also other organs such as the lungs and the liver. Helminths are large, multicellular organisms that are generally visible to the naked eye in their adult stage. Like protozoa, helminths can be either free-living or parasitic in nature, meaning they could live in the environment or they can infect humans, parasitic. Helminths are classified into three types. Flukes, called trematodes, tapeworms, called cestodes, and roundworms, called nematodes. Flukes and tapeworms are also known as flatworms to make things confusing, but it's also quite easy because both these uh, helminths, worms, they're all very flat. So let's talk about each one of these three types of helminths in more detail, beginning with flukes. So flukes, also known as trematodes, are leaf-shaped flat worms. They're flat. Majority are hermaphrodites, meaning they have both male testes and female uterus, reproductive organs, in the same uh, person. The schistosomes are the only trematodes which have different sexes. So they individually have male and female reproductive organs. Trematodes have two suckers, mouth openings, one oral and one ventral, which help them to move and anchor to host tissue. The mouth openings form their digestive tract, which funnily enough, ends sort of blindly. Trematodes therefore have an incomplete digestive tract, they usually regurgitate things back out. Trematodes' bodies are covered with tegument, which is usually armed with scale-like spines. The tegument allows for the absorption of nutrients and excretion of waste. The two suckers allow the adult worm to attach and move around in the definitive host, such as the human, for example. And they could attach to things such as the lungs, liver, and the stomach. Sources of transmission of human infection include fish, crustaceans, and aquatic plants. There are many types of uh, trematodes or flukes. Different species of uh, flukes tend to infect different parts of the human body. And this is a good way to classify the trematodes or the flukes. You have blood flukes, which are the schistosomas, the liver flukes, which are the clonorchis, lung flukes, paragonimus, and intestinal flukes, fasciolopsis busci. Now, the next type of helminths are the tapeworms, also known as the cestoids. Tapeworms are another type of flatworm. They're flat. Adult tapeworms are elongated, segmented flatworms. There are also hermaphrodites. The head has one or more hooked suckers for firm attachment to the host. Behind the head is the neck, which is the growing region. The body consists of segments called proglottid, each containing reproductive organs. And because they're hermaphrodites, they contain both male and female uh, reproductive organs. The neck is an unsegmented region with high regenerative capacity. If treatment does not eliminate the neck, the entire worm can actually regenerate and grow. Tapeworms have no digestive system, no mouth, no anus. The digested food of the host is absorbed through the body wall of the tapeworms. The life cycle of tapeworms is complicated and actually involves one, two, or three intermediate hosts. Important tapeworms that infect humans can be grouped into those that 
infect the intestines and those that infect other tissues, other organs. Tapeworms which typically infect the gastrointestinal tract uh, genre include Diphilobothrium, Hymenolipis, Tania. Tapeworm genres that infect other tissues include Echinococcus. Now the third and last type of helminth are the roundworms called nematodes. Roundworms are cylindrical worms. They have a complete digestive tract. They are not flat. They are cylindrical and round. And so they contain a body cavity. They inhabit intestinal and extra-intestinal sites within our bodies. Roundworms can either gain entry to the host by egg ingestion, such as Trichuris, Enterobius, and Ascaris. And then there are those that are capable of producing lava that then penetrate the skin of their host, such as Strongyloides, or produce lava that then penetrate the mucosa, such as with Ascaris. Roundworms can actually be classified easily based on their life cycles. So you have group one. Group one roundworms are those that attach and grow in the intestine soon after being ingested. And these include Trichurus and Enterobius. Group two are the roundworms that first penetrate the venous system, either via the skin or via the intestine. They then enter the lungs and then migrate up the bronchi to the trachea where they will be swallowed again into the intestines. And this group include Ascaris, Strongyloides, and the hookworms, Ancylostoma, Duodenale, and Necator americanus. So those are three groups of helminths, broadly speaking. But within each of these groups, there are those that are also referred to as soil-transmitted helminths. Now, soil-transmitted helminths are a group of parasitic worms that infect humans through contaminated soil. And these worms are commonly found in areas with poor sanitization and hygiene practices, especially in tropical and subtropical regions. The most common types of soil-transmitted helminths include Ascaris lumbricoides, hookworms, the and Cyclostoma duodenale and Necator americanus, and the whipworm, Trichuris tracheura. Now, moving on to diagnoses. The diagnoses of helminths is generally made by examining the stool or tissues of specific organs, looking for eggs, larvae, or the adult worm form. And this is usually identified through a microscope. Treatment of helminths infection is with antiparasitic medication. So in summary, helminths are large multicellular organisms that are generally visible to the naked eye in their adult stage. Like protozoa, helminths can either be free living or parasitic in nature, meaning they could live in the environment or they can infect humans. Helminths are classified into three types, flukes, the trematodes, tapeworms, the cestoids, and roundworms, the nematodes. If we draw a table here, we can briefly summarize each of their characteristics. So, first and foremost are the trematodes. Their shape is unsegmented. They have no body cavity because they're flat. They have an incomplete digestive tract, and they're hermaphrodites except for schistosoma. The cestoids, also known as the tapeworms, these, are, these guys have a segmented plane without a body cavity because they're flat and they do not have a digestive system and they're also hermaphrodites. The final ones are the roundworms or the nematodes. These guys are cylindrical. They do contain a body cavity and they have a complete digestive tract, and they're either male or female. Thank you for watching.